Story. Okay, everybody knows Toy Story. So they know the boys are back in town. Boys are back in town. Do, do, do. Well, that's Phil and Tim Lizzie. When people know them here, it's kind of like you see somebody with a Joy Division, Division t-shirt. I go, yeah, they know music. Even though I'm not a huge Joy Division fan, when I see an American with a Joy Division t-shirt on, I'm like, I like that person. Instantly. Uh, so I used to do this um, band where we paid tribute. We weren't a tribute act. We basically did the whole Live and Dangerous album. And I was never a Lizzie fan, but I was a Phil Inna fan. I loved him. I thought he was cool. And his two solo albums are just brilliant. I would go along. We would do the tribute uh, gigs. And this one we did in 1990. And his mother came up to me and said, Oh, my God, you remind me of my Philip. And she mentioned Frank Sinatra to me, which was great because I was crazy into Sinatra. Still am. Sinatra, it was like... To them, it was all my music. Look, this is some of the best music ever made. So I'm going off stories, but they're connected. We had a magazine back in Ireland called Hot Press, kind of like a Rolling Stone. And Axel Rose was coming into the country with the band to do a gig. And they asked him, the first question was, so who's your biggest influence as a singer? And he went, Frank Sinatra. And that was the end of it. There was never another question. It was like, oh, okay, Frank Sinatra is cool. He's cool. Ridiculous, you know, that people, you know, because somebody like him said it. If, I, if he had said Sinatra was an idiot, it wouldn't have made a difference to me because Sinatra is the king of singing, always was to me. So um, when she mentioned Sinatra to me, it was, it was like, wow, she must hear what I'm influenced by. So she invited me to the house that night and I met all the rock stars from that time. And she invited us out in the summer. We were two weeks in this legendary house called Glencore that he would have recorded and wrote in and lived as rock star. Like living here, you know, like almost like going to Springsteen's house for the summer. And uh, she let us sleep in his king size five, whatever, California king bed. Nobody in Ireland had a California king bed. We had queen size beds and that was it. We didn't have king. The houses wouldn't fit a king size. But this was like a, it was a mansion he lived in. We used to walk around a lot singing. Do you know that King Cole uh, on the street where you live? Well, I have often walked down that street before. Oops. And I would always go around whistling because I love the melody. Da, 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 dee, da, 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 dee, da, da. So she comes up to me one day and she goes, you know what? That was my Philip's favorite song. And she called him my Philip. That was his name was Philip Lina. I said, which song? She said, you, go, you keep singing on the street where you, you live. And I thought, she's pulling my leg. She said, come on into the uh, music room. So she brought me into his jukebox. And at the bottom of the jukebox was all these albums. She pulls out this dog-eared version of the same album I had at home. Nat King Cole's 20 Greatest Hits. So I, me I remember saying to band members, you can be guaranteed Phil it was into Sinatra. Because you can hear it in his songs like Sarah and in his songwriting. But of course, nah. And that was just, you know, it's like vilification. Is that not vilification? Um, vindication. Um, so that was, that was something. And I stayed out there for two weeks and uh, staying in a rock star's house, I just felt honored. So I had a little um, nostalgic moment there. There's no more to that story, I'm sorry. <laughs>